Um, yeah, I would just say stay scrappy and, um, and nimble and always like keep yourself open to the opportunities that you don't necessarily, like not that you don't want to do, but like that, like kind of go hand in hand with your business. But um, yeah, just like follow those little threads of what could work and um, yeah, just stay open to those sorts of opportunities because you never know where they're going to lead. So if you could introduce yourself, your name and what you do. Uh, yep. So I'm Emma Johnston um, and I run Hunter Paper Co. and also Hunt and Gather. Um, and I set up Hunter Paper Co., which is a luxury letterpress stationery brand um, in 2016, quite a while ago now. Um, and yeah, so I bought a letterpress printer and just started producing greetings cards and different things that's kind of grown from there. Um, and now I stock shops across the UK, Ireland, Europe, Australia, America. <laughs> it's kind of got really big at this stage. Um, so yeah, that's been pretty busy. And then in the lockdown, in uh, the lockdown last year, I um, set up Hunt and Gather, which is an online stationery shop, um, which has Hunt and pa- Hunter Paper Co brands or products alongside. Um, like a lot of other stationary products that I just really loved and wanted to kind of bring together in a collection. Mm-hmm. Um, so the idea for that was before lockdown and before we had a pandemic to deal with, um, I wanted to um, like set up a, a bricks and mortar stationary shop in Belfast. So that's still the goal, but obviously um, we just need the world to return to some sort of normality first. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, that's the two projects that I really work on most of the time. So, yeah. So how did you get into your business? Like what was your background before you started this? Um, so I studied illustration um, at Falmouth University. And then when I moved home again, I kind of started freelancing in the illustration world um, and then kind of just couldn't really find the right fit there. So just started selling my own products, um, you know, illustrating things to sell. Um, and then it just kind of evolved from there really. Um, so yeah, I just like was freelance alongside and then just kept adding products in and then realized really that that was what was working and just followed that little thread of, of what was working. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, that's, that's really the starting point. Yeah. And how have you found um, building your business and what's the process been like over since like 2016? Yeah, uh, I was really lucky at the start. I was still living at home. Um, I just moved back home after uni and um, my parents didn't put too much pressure on me, which was great. So, um, so yeah, I had like that flexibility to test things out and see what was working. And, you know, I wasn't really relying on the income of it. I got a part-time job to go alongside it and just let it grow like as naturally as it could. Um, so, yeah, it was really just that progression of testing different products without seeing what was working. And then just I just really followed what was what started selling and went from there. So mm-hmm. I never really imagined greetings cards would be the big seller for me, but it just kind of flowed in that direction and I was happy to follow it. So yeah. I buy your cards every Christmas. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just so I love your products because they're they're very personal and they're funny, you know, and it's you can give them to someone and it can still feel like it's a personal card for them. So yeah. I love your products, I'm obsessed. <laughs> Um, and that's interesting that you say as well about having a part-time job and not relying on the income because I think that's where a lot of people maybe get misconstrued about being self-employed that you have to go all in and it's a hundred percent you know yeah. rather than actually the smarter and less stressful uh, option is to have a job coincide so that you do have that headspace to experiment that's and it's not thing. like you're not living for because it, it, it creates a different dynamic in relationship to your business isn't it? absolutely yeah I think there there becomes a point where it's good to give yourself that little push um, course, yeah. so I, I worked part-time for a year and then I'd built up enough that like I wasn't I still wasn't making a great income but I was like mm-hmm. if, I, if I just put myself fully into this see where it goes I can always go back to that part-time job if it doesn't work out mm-hmm. um, but yeah just when you get to that stage you kind of can feel feel for it yourself and you know when it's the time to just yeah invest and see if it will work and mm-hmm. yeah and was there a defining moment when you knew that it was time to like go on and um not not specifically really I like I had a few stockists locally um of my cards and things like that and then I got 
born and bred as a stockist who were um, Studio Sook at the time. And I just mm-hmm. thought like uh, at the time they were working on a commission model and like doing a monthly. So whatever they sold in the month, they would pay for you, pay for it mm-hmm. at the end of the month then. So I thought that's kind of like a monthly income. <laughs> and so I did like two months of that model and I was like, I could probably replace my my uh, part-time job even though I was nowhere near it. But I just thought if I can just, I could see those little puzzle pieces that would make up my income and um, just really threw myself into it. So yeah, I think it was, the seed was always there. It was always the intention to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I just kind of gave myself that push to just go and get, get to work really. <laughs> yeah. And how has your business changed or shifted through the pandemic? Um, so like for the last three or four years, I've really relied on going to trade shows and selling my products to, um, to shops and uh, like business to business relationships and building that up. And I really thought that that was the only way I could do business. Like it was, I just got kind of stuck in that pattern. Um, not that it was a bad thing at all. It was great. And it really grew my business, but now that trade shows has been taken out of the equation, we can't do them. Um, it's really opened my eyes up to everything else that I can do. Um, so I think when things maybe do return to normal and uh, trade shows are more of a thing again, like I don't think I'll be like jumping straight into them. It'll be like, is this the right thing at the right time? Or is there other things I can do? So I definitely focused on hunt and gather a lot more than I maybe would have, you know, in a normal year. I kind of I thought that project would be something I would run in the background and it's really taken hold now. And it's mm-hmm. it's a really big part of my day to day. So um so yeah, I think it's just it's just opened my eyes to like stay nimble and flexible and and uh, working on what's working really and moving mm-hmm. from there. And with Hunter and Gather, are you now essentially the retailer and people are asking you to stock their stuff? <laughs> yeah, well, we've had a few people asking us to stock our, our their stuff, um, but it's not quite. I don't think it's quite like the same environment as it would be if there wasn't a pandemic. So, mm-hmm. um, even for Hunter Paper Co, I would like send out catalogs twice a year and really, you know, market that side of the business to wholesale customers. And it just doesn't feel right at the moment with you know shops closed and and everything else. I don't want to be pressuring them to to buy, and I feel like people are the same. To, to us really it's just mm-hmm. it just doesn't feel like the right time to sell that sort of thing and mm-hmm. um, but that's it's still nice to to get emails from people and and kind of they say like will you consider us in the future and that sort of thing so yeah it's definitely early stages but I think uh, that'll become more of a thing in the future of people approaching us so yeah it's a nice mm-hmm. balance it's like the two sides of the coin really and do you find like it's stressful trying to manage the both or do they coincide really well with each other um, so far, they kind of have. But it's, it's kind of worked out quite nicely because um, so wholesale's taken a back seat because of the pandemic, and then Hunt and Gather kind of stepped into that place. So at the moment, it's working quite well. But I'd imagine probably when things return to normal and wholesale really picks up again, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll have to think about <laughs> maybe hiring someone or I don't know how to handle that really. But we'll figure it out <laughs> <laughs> one day at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what's one thing that you have learned about yourself over in the last year? Um, I think I like didn't really realize how resourceful I was. Like I, I kind of thought I just, I, I think I thought I was lucky really when, when like my business was, was working in normal times. And then when the pandemic hit and everything stopped for a month or so, then I thought, right, it's down to me. I have to sort this out. So um, yeah, it's definitely like re- like kind of put that resourcefulness back into me and just um it's, it feels like that early stage when you're kind of scrappy and you have to do everything um you know you would do anything it doesn't matter you, you don't really care what you're doing as long as you're growing your business and that's definitely kind of come back into my thinking about my business now so mm. yeah it's quite it's quite nice just to like not get stuck in your ways and just um, yeah, keep that scrappy mentality. It's nice. Mm. That reminds me of a book actually called Stretch by Scott Sonnenshine. I and he talks that. about um, at the beginning, you always have that kind of stretchiness of mindset. So you're always thinking of using what you have rather than thinking you have to buy the newest things. And yeah. he talks about the book of just being really scrappy. Yeah. And like, it's such a thing that, you know, all entrepreneurs should keep in them even when they're really successful so it just reminded me of that it's a really good i never want to lose that again and not that i don't think i got that far away from it but 
it's just a really nice reminder like just always be looking for the scrappy way to do things and mm-hmm. yeah yeah I love that um so last question what advice would you give to someone that's just starting out in business especially like at this time um oh i don't know actually <laughs> i was looking over the questions and this was the one i was struggling with them <laughs> um yeah i would just say stay scrappy and um mm-hmm. and nimble and always like keep yourself open to the opportunities that you don't necessarily like not that you don't want to do but like that like kind of go hand in hand with your business but um yeah just like follow those little threads of what could work and um yeah just stay open to those sorts of opportunities because you never know where they're going to lead um so yeah i never imagined what i was doing at the start like would become what it is now so and that was literally just from me following what worked um so yeah i think that's that's really the advice i would give just follow what works and, and as long as you're enjoying it then that's that's the way forward <laughs>